There's a question that has been asked quite often, and that's in relation to loading videos up to Moodle. And the question is, if I have a video that I'd like to put into Moodle, how do I go about doing that? And what is the, the right way to do it? Now, most people, when they first start, their first reaction is, let's just use the video upload function that's part of Moodle and load our videos in there. And that seems quite logical to start with, but I'm going to give you three reasons why that is not a good idea, and then follow that up with a solution, and four reasons why this solution is a better way to do it for you if you are intending to load your videos up to the Moodle LMS. Now, the three reasons why it is not a good idea to upload your files to Moodle. The first one is that the storage required by a video is massive. There's a huge amount of storage space that's needed to upload a video compared to most other uh, media formats. So remember videos are 24 frames per second uh, at a certain size and that size, uh, depending on where you're delivering the video uh, and what the video was recorded on, uh, if it's high definition, it's going to be very, very big. And so it's just not a good idea to load lots and lots of videos or even a video onto your Moodle server just because it will take up so much space. And remember, you've got students loading up exams and their their assignments and their assessments, and you don't want to, to make it more difficult for them by running out of space on your Moodle server. There is plenty of other things that the Moodle server needs to be doing, and storing videos is not really a practical one. Now, the second reason is that the user experience is not optimal. If you load a video up into the Moodle, uh, into your Moodle course directly, uh, what happens is the video sits on the server and when it's ready to be delivered to the students, it does this sort of pretend streaming concept, but it doesn't adjust for the different devices or the uh, size of the files or of the network availability. So meaning how much data can actually stream down to the user at the other end. So it's not designed to stream or to correctly stream videos in a way that is, is going to be an optimal experience on the user end. So that's reason number two. Number three, the load on the server. Now, Moodle is already a massive uh, product and it puts a big load on the server when students are accessing content and resources. PHP uh, is very, very busy doing a lot of uh, database connections, which affects the database, obviously. Uh, and also all the, the PHP programming that goes into Moodle, it's very, very busy and putting a lot of load on the server without adding the load of trying to send video data down, especially if lots of students are watching videos at the same time. It's really going to have a, a very negative impact on your Moodle, Moodle server. So they're the three main reasons. The storage required or space required is massive. It's really not sensible to do it. The user experience isn't optimal. It's, it's not designed to be delivering videos. And the load on the server is just going to slow things down. So it's not really a good idea. So they're the three reasons why not a good idea to load your videos directly up to Moodle. What is the option? Well, there's a few options. You can load your videos up to YouTube. You can load them up to another private hosting company that hosts videos. One of those is Vimeo. And I'm going to use Vimeo as the example, but it could be any other video hosting service as well. And there's quite a few. But here are the four things that make it very, very sensible for you to put your videos on another hosting company and have them hosted there and then just embed the video like you embed a YouTube video. So reason number one, you can restrict access of the videos to a specific domain. So that means you can load the video up to, the, to Vimeo or to the other service provider and then you can tell the video to only play back through your website. So that means you put in your Moodle domain, www.whatever it is, and you say these videos can only be delivered through that domain. That way other people can't access those videos and play them from other domains, only from yours. You can decide. And you can have more than one domain that's per video, that's okay. And you can also set up a default. So that's reason number one. You can restrict the videos to a specific domain, which is really, really useful. Second one is, is that it is designed for video streaming. So when you load your video up to Vimeo, it automatically adjusts the video quality, it automatically adjusts to deliver to the device that you're using, and it automatically adjusts the network capacity and decides you know, how much data 
the user can actually experience at the moment depending on their connection and it will adjust the quality of the video to suit that to try and give them the best experience. So just that part of, of having your videos on a separate service, on an actual video streaming service, is extremely practical. Reason number three, you can update the one video in your main repository. So on Vimeo, you go to, to that video in Vimeo, you can replace that video and it will update all the other embedded versions of that video um, for, for all of the courses or all of the content that you have. So you don't have to go through every unit or every um, page and try and find all the videos and then go and update them all. And that will save you a lot of time when a video needs to be updated or improved um, as what happens in the process of creating educational content. That's number three. You can update the videos. Number four, when backing up and restoring a course in Moodle, and if you've ever been involved in this process, sometimes you can end up with some really big files. Now, if you've put video content into, into a particular unit, then that video content, if it's been uploaded directly into Moodle, will also transfer down as well into the backup file. And that means your backup file could be incredibly huge, which then adds in a whole collection of other issues to do with storage of backups, uh, transferring backups, loading the backups back up again when your server may not allow that size file upload. And you'll have to go and get the server updated or changed uh, in the configuration to allow a larger file to be uploaded. So there's a lot of issues with backing, backup and restore if you're using really large files and especially putting videos in there. So they're the four reasons why it is worth going to an external provider for your videos and embedding them in your content rather than loading them straight up to the Moodle server. So the reasons were you can restrict video access per domain, it automatically adjusts the video quality and delivery to suit the device and network connection. Number three, you can update one video and it updates all the locations that that video is embedded. And number four, when backing up and restoring courses in Moodle, you'll have a much smaller file size if your videos do not live directly in Moodle, but they are embedded. So hopefully that's helped you a bit with uh, the issue of either loading up your videos or hosting them externally in Moodle.